the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. The holiday season is underway. Most families are adapting their traditions from scoring deals to preparing big meals while coping with the pandemic. But some are struggling to make ends meet rather than spending and celebrating. First at 11, WRTV's Cornelius Hawker shows you how a local pastor is helping those in need and what you can do to support his mission. Like he's done for the last 25 years, Reverend Richard Hunter is getting ready to make sure those who need help this Christmas season get it. It's not just a meal, it's, it's, it's a week's worth of groceries. The Reverend is talking about all the food he gives away, much of it purchased by him and his wife, to give to those in need. He tells us why he makes sure all the items he gives away can last for more than one meal. Take the money you would have spent on groceries and Make sure you, your utility is on. If your child needs a toy, make sure that you go buy your child a toy if, if they don't have one. Do those other things to make uh, Christmas more Christmassy. On December 11th, Richard Hunter Ministries and Martin University will be giving Christmas help boxes to those in need. But because of the pandemic, the need is so much greater this year. That's where Reverend Hunter is hoping the community can step up and help. We're asking for donations to buy this food. This is this is brand new food. It's not food that's been in the store or any of that stuff. It's, it's coming straight out of the warehouse through Kroger's. We pick it up at Kroger's and put it in the box. The Reverend tells me they plan to give out 550 boxes on the 11th, and he has faith they'll be able to pull it off. This is a blessing for us to be a blessing to someone else. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. If you can donate to Reverend Hunter's Christmas help program, you can contact him at the number on your screen. If your family could use some of the help the Reverend is offering, call 317-347-1690 and leave your name and the size of your family. We also have all this contact info posted at WRTV.com. There are still a few days left in November, but this has already become the deadliest month of the pandemic here in Indiana. More than 5,300 Hoosiers have died with COVID-19 since the pandemic began. The State Department of Health recorded more than 1,000 of those deaths in November. Today, another 5,700 positive cases were reported in Indiana. Around the country, experts are concerned about a surge in new infections around or after the Thanksgiving holiday. A Hamilton High Southeastern High School teacher continues his fight against COVID tonight. He's one of many Hoosiers being treated with convalescent plasma donated by those who have recovered from the virus. To honor Neil Wagoner's health battle, the HSC Teachers Union hosted a convalescent plasma drive with the help of Versity. Dozens of people signed up to donate. The plasma is used to treat patients with severe cases of COVID-19. And supplies are running low as cases skyrocket. One pint of blood impacts up to three lives and there's no replacement for blood. So um, somebody that comes in here is impacting local neighbors, friends, family. People who have not had the virus were also able to donate blood at the drive and get tested for COVID-19 antibodies. NBA basketball will be back at Baker's Life Fieldhouse next month. The Pacers will host a preseason game against Philadelphia on December 18th. Fans will not be allowed inside. The first part of the Pacers regular season schedule is expected to be released early next week. And it is opening day for many tree farms in our area, but it looks a little different due to the pandemic. WRTV's Megan St. Torn visited a local tree farm to find out how they're working to keep traditions alive for families while also keeping them safe. Families coming out to Sambles Tree Farm in Fortville can still walk around and find the perfect tree for their home. But leaders here are taking extra precautions to keep people safe and healthy. <laughs> he said this year he wanted to uh, cut it down himself. <laughs> so figure uh, it's, it's his turn. It's really hard. <laughs> this is the day the Chamberlain family has been looking forward to. We've been cutting our own tree down probably now, let's see, 10 years. A family tradition, not even a pandemic, could stop. They're thankfully allowing us to still be able to get this this year, so it doesn't take that tradition away, unlike uh, the normal tradition of like Thanksgiving, not being able to get a whole group together like we normally do, and but at least we can still hold on to some normality. A sense of normalcy families are looking for. I think the demand is there. People still want to get outside where they can do something safely like this, uh, enjoy the Christmas season. And I think on a farm, they can definitely social distance and we're requiring masks in certain areas. The owner here says he's also requiring appointments this weekend to help control crowds. Everyone will still get a tree. 
We're just going to make sure that everyone doesn't come at it at the same time. He says last year they sold more than 400 trees on opening day. This year they'll do around 275. By the end of the season, though, he still expects to sell the same amount of trees or more than years past. There you go, like that. There you go, there you go, there you go. This year's been completely different than any year that uh, I think anybody can even recall. So adding this right here uh, and bringing home at least a little tiny bit of, uh, of what it used to be is invaluable. That's what makes a holiday spirit. Push it. There it is. We got it. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, WRTV. Despite record spikes in unemployment, experts expect Americans to spend more this holiday shopping season, which kicked off today with Black Friday. WRTV's Nicole Griffin shows you many shoppers are avoiding the large big box stores and choosing to spend their money locally. While she's home for the holidays visiting from Nashville, Jane Shea brought her daughter to unplug soy candles in Fishers. I told her about this amazing store, making our own candles. Jane just discovered the local business last week, and Black Friday is her third trip back. It's just warm and inviting. It's, it's cute. Everybody's so friendly here. It is so neat. You can come in and pour a candle any size. It's really for any price range. Patricia Freund is a regular at Unplug, spending her Black Friday shopping local as well. My husband owns a local business and so I know the importance of making sure that people do shop local all the time. Uh, pandemic or not. Jennifer Sturgill and her husband are the owners. For the first four years, they were located in Fortville, but bought this new building in January. Did a full build out during COVID, so it was nerve wracking, but it was a good time to kind of pivot our business and to put a lot of focus into our retail and what we wanted our experience to be for customers. She says thankfully support from the community during the pandemic has continued to bring her business success. She says this year people are spending more time at home burning their candles. I think it's so surreal to think about how many connections and friendships we have created over this last five and a half years with customers that have been with us since we started selling at the Noblesville Farmers Market and to now see them come in and enjoy our brand new shop with their friends and family and safely pour candles you know and have something to do when they could choose to go anywhere else it's it's fantastic. And tomorrow is Small Business Saturday. Unplugged Soy Candles is having their biggest sale of the entire year. They hope the community will continue to come out and support them. Working for you and Fishers, Nicole Griffin, WRTV. Store owners across central Indiana have high hopes for Small Business Saturday. Still ahead, I'll take you to Greenwood, where shops are counting on your support. I'll have your hourly Saturday forecast, but also gaining attention will be our Monday snow potential. More on that straight ahead. And with snow in the forecast, animal advocates are mobilizing to make sure the outdoor pets of Indianapolis are safe and warm. We'll be right back. Small Business Saturday is taking on a whole new meaning this year. After major retailers offered up big deals for Black Friday, shoppers are encouraged to shop small the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I visited small businesses in Johnson County to find out how you can help them rebound this weekend. It's definitely not my favorite year. It's been a little bit of a struggle. We ended up um, closing our doors, uh, I think it was March 13th, and um, we just had to get very creative with what we were doing. For many, this year has been tough, and small businesses got hit hard with the pandemic closures and restrictions, forcing many owners to do whatever they can to stay afloat. It's just been a constant, like, rebalancing game, refocusing, thinking about new ways to do things. It, it's hard every day to kind of come and make up a new thing, and how do I... How do I change my business from something that has been working to what fits in today's society? So we're all under a lot of strain to, to adjust and pivot. Whatever we can do to continue to bring in funding is what we have to do, and we just have to uh, struggle through it. Without the Small Business Association's COVID response loans, the Paycheck Protection Program, and the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, a lot of small businesses that spoke to us say they would not have been able to survive to this point. It was the most difficult year I've ever had to manage. For us personally, it was more of a staffing issue, trying to keep everybody that you wanted employed, and then that way when you reopen, that everybody was available to you. 
as long as they wanted to come back and felt comfortable, we retained all of our employees. And the SBA is urging shoppers to continue to support them so these stores can continue to stay in our communities. So I think where it's really important, if you want to see those small businesses stay in your community, which you know, they're the lifeblood of that community, they hire folks locally. You know, they support the local sports programs and sports teams. They are entrenched in these communities and we need them to survive. They employ 50% of all Hoosiers for small businesses. Statistics from American Express's Small Business Saturday website show 62% of small business owners need to see consumer spending back at pre-pandemic levels by the end of the year or they won't survive. Shopping local is just a small price to pay for quality that you simply cannot find online. Considering we're a full service shop, you can't get service online. You can't touch the product. Uh, you don't have the communication with another person who actually knows what they're doing. Uh, if you shop too much online, we, not, might, we might not be here anymore. So who's gonna service your bike? And the last Yelp local economic impact report shows that in the wake of COVID-19, changing the way stores and restaurants must operate, Yelp says they see both permanent and temporary closures rise across the nation, with 60% of those closed businesses not reopening. That is almost 100,000 businesses that are now closed for good across the U.S. We just go day by day. That's all you can really do right now and see how things turn out for you. Many Hoosier small businesses are asking shoppers this year to support their neighbors. Shop small and put your community first so we can all rebound together. We're just really trying to say this has to be a way of life. If you love having a thriving community and downtown shopping district, places to eat, you have to think of them first. Part of it is your community and the, and the community getting together and saying this is an important place. This is something that we have gone to all our lives and, uh, and, and we need to keep it going. I just would like, like everybody to know that they, every time they shop small, they really are encouraging the business owners in a way that they might not realize by responding to the efforts that we've made either on social media or advertising and coming in and actually shopping with us. We, it means the world to us. And there are a lot of small businesses to hit up in the Circle City. And speaking of the Circle City, Monument Circle is looking as beautiful as ever with the Soldiers and Sailors Monument finally lit. Kevin, it looks gorgeous. The circle of lights. All you have to say is they're on. The holiday season is underway. And what is a beautiful tradition. Now we'll add maybe some snow to that scene on Monday. Make it even more beautiful. 36 in Kokomo up in Howard County. Our temperatures will drop into the upper 20s to around 30 overnight. Then as we go into the weekend, the best day I think of the next week is tomorrow. Saturday we'll have sunshine around. Call it dry and pleasant through the entire weekend. Our chance for snow is there, especially Monday, and we narrow that down mainly in the eastern half of the state with the best chance for accumulating snow along the state line. It will be cold and windy for all of us, so quite a change back to winter as we get to early next week. 46 tomorrow, lots of sunshine. Sunday, the clouds will increase. Temperature jumps to almost 50. Then we turn it the other way as the storm strengthens, brings with it a little rain snow mix early in the day, Monday changing to all snow. Tomorrow, it's about sunshine and temperatures comfortably in the 40s, as we mentioned. The wind will be calm, relatively speaking, west 5 to 10 miles per hour. Average temperatures this time of year around 46 or 47. We're in the ballpark across all of central Indiana. Sunday, the clouds increase temperature increases as well just to about 50 degrees during the afternoon hours that sets the stage then for the storm system on a Monday we're on the western side of this the favorable side for snow but the question is that area of low pressure has been inching to the east at least in the computer model projections if that keeps happening the better chance for accumulating snow will slide to the east as well Right now, along the state line with Ohio is the most likely spot to see some accumulation, maybe uh, several inches there. The ground is warm at the start, 
that will help minimize some of the accumulation. That storm track, again, we'll keep watching that as it moves the east. That'll take the snow to the east as well. Lake effect snow becomes an issue in northern Indiana. There are the wind gusts Monday, 20 to 30 miles per hour. We wake up Monday morning to snow, and that's what I'm talking about with eastern Indiana kind of being more on the western edge of the whole storm system. Definitely much colder all of next work week, looking at highs in the 30s and lows in the 20s. That's a return trip to winter, and we step into December. Amanda? We're almost there, Kevin. And while we prepare for the possibility of snow, animal advocates are making a big push to educate pet owners about leaving their animals outside. WRTV's Kara Kenny spent the day with Friends of Indianapolis Dogs Outside to find out why they are focusing on eight specific areas of the city. Indianapolis ordinance says when the weather hits below 40 degrees, dogs that stay outside have to have a shelter that's big enough for them to stand up and turn around in, has a flexible cover, and also has insulation. Fido says straw is the best kind because it doesn't hold any moisture. Volunteers with Friends of Indianapolis Dogs Outside are loading up and heading out onto the streets. We're going out now, really, because we know the weather is going to start getting miserably cold. They're focusing on eight hot spots. The dark areas of this map, like the east side, are neighborhoods where the city gets the most animal control calls and violations. Chelsea Fargo saw it firsthand when she worked for Indianapolis Animal Care Services. Usually it was on the, you know, the lower income sides of um, the city. You would see the dogs chained up outside. Um, all the animals were usually unaltered most of the time. Most of the time they mean well and they love their pets, um, just like family, but they just need help. Their first stop is a family that keeps their dog outside. After making sure the dog has proper shelter, Fido offers to spay their pet for free. Helping you get her spayed, is that something you guys wanted help with and vaccinated? It would be free. And gives them pamphlets with more information. We let people know we're here to help. Um, we want to help you keep your dog in the home. You know, we, we don't we don't want the dogs to end up at the shelter, but we just want the dogs to have, you know, a good quality of life. Their next stop is a German Shepherd chained up outside. Fido was concerned because the dog appears thin and they suspect the chain may be too short and the dog house is on the small side. They go knock on the door, but no one answers, so they make a note to come back. Although Fido cannot write citations, they can pass cases on to the city if they're not seeing any improvement. If it's to the point where the conditions are really poor, the animal is suffering, and, and the people are not willing to make improvements, that's when animal care services can step in. The animal care and treatment ordinance requires you to bring your animal inside when the temperature hits 20 degrees or below. Life-threatening temperatures, especially for short-haired dogs. Fido also provides dog houses and insulation to those in need. As frigid weather approaches, they hope their efforts will save the lives of many furry friends. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. If you think an animal is suffering or in danger, you can call the Mayor's Action Center. If it's a night or weekend, call the IMPD non-emergency line. And if you can also contact Fido directly for help. A full weekend of football in downtown Indy. The Colts will play on Sunday. But before that, Indiana's high school football state finals. Brad Brown has a recap of night number one when the news at 11 continues. station working for you. This is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. Center Grove and Westfield seem destined on a course for this matchup. The top two teams meeting for the Class 6A championship tonight at Lucas Oil Stadium. CG opened with a turnover to start, then the offense was a machine. Carson Steele scored a pair of first-half touchdowns, ran for 138 yards on 31 carries in his final high school game. 14-0 after one quarter. CG goes big in the second. Taven Jackson found Trent Veith open on busted coverage. 73-yard score. They connected for another later. The Trojans scored TDs on five straight possessions. Westfield showed some life in the third quarter. Maximus Webster calls his own number. The QB also threw for a score tonight. But the Rocks would simply run out of time. Center Grove clinches a second Class 6A title to go with their win in 2015. They finish off a most impressive 
impressive undefeated 14-0 season with a 38-14 victory. We've all grown up together, and, you know, we knew this class was special, especially the senior class. And, uh, you know, since we were, you know, eight and nine years old, we've been running the wing tee, and, you know, so it's just like a master thing, kind of just kept running and running, and, you know, getting better and better at it as well. Everybody said we were upset about losing last year. We totally said we don't care about that. We had a great second half of the football game here last year. Our theme was start to finish. We started and we finished, but this week it was time to finish, and the kids did a great job. I can't thank my coaches and my community uh, enough for all the effort and work they put in. The day's opening game was in Class 2A. Western Boone in the finals for the third straight year. Weibo running back Robbie Taylor had a record-setting performance. 43 carries, the most ever in a state final. 210 yards rushing, the last of those into the end zone with 90 seconds left. Western Boone still trailed by two. They would get the ball back with 40 seconds to go. They worked into position for a field goal. Sophomore Josiah Smith lining up for the Stars. He's the son of former Colts punter Hunter Smith. The 39-yard attempt is true. No doubt about it, Weibo clinches the three-peat with a thrilling one-point victory. I thought about um, the offseason and this summer, how all the seniors stepped up, and they were they really did a great job with the summer teams. Um, Coach Pelly, how he's done all this for us, and I was like, I really want to make this kick. I mean, it wouldn't matter either way, but... I stepped up there and I said, well, here goes nothing. Ron Colley played in Friday's middle game, the 4A final against Hobart. Rebels quarterback Aiden Leffler threw four touchdown passes in the first half, two each in the first and second quarters, two of the four going to Kyle Lockhart. Ron Colley built a 28-0 lead at halftime. Running back Baron Hebler got it done on the ground, 36 carries for 155 yards. He got into the end zone in the third quarter, a nearly perfect performance for Ron Colley as they clinch their 10th state title with a 49-7 win. Everything opens up with a really, really good old line and I've preached it all year that our old line was the best in the state and uh, tonight they proved it, but when you have an old line like them, Everything just opens up, the pass game opens up, the run game opens up, and everything everything revolves around them, and I can't be proud of all of our guys. I love every single one of them. If I, could, I would name every single one of them if I could, but they're all awesome kids. From the line, to the defensive backs, to the wide receiving core, everywhere. They're all awesome kids. The state finals continue with three more games on Saturday. Covenant Christian is in the Class 1A final for the first time in school history. 3A will have Bishop Chatar taking on Danville. Cathedral faces Zionsville in the Class 5A nightcap. The action starts Saturday at 11 a.m. at Lucas Oil Stadium. Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. The annual WRTV Toy Drive is underway right now. If you have the means to give back, you can drop off new unwrapped gifts at several used store locations. We will also be collecting items at Indianapolis area Simon Malls next Saturday, December 5th. For more info, go to WRTV.com slash Toy Drive. Kevin. And another view from Monument Circle, thanks to Michael Japowitz for this picture tonight. Picture perfect for the weekend. 46, lots of sunshine first half of the weekend. Clouds increase on Sunday, temperature almost 50, and then keep our eye on snow Monday. Amanda? Thanks for making WRTV your choice for news. Good. Have a good night.